Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and you're looking at the representation of the magnetic field of our sun. As you can see, it's a pretty complex environment. But in this video, we're actually going to be talking about the first ever calculation of the magnetic field of another planet. Let's discuss this in a little bit more detail and welcome to What The Math. So today we know that the magnetic field is super important for various planets, including of course Earth. It protects us from the super dangerous solar radiation that would strip our planet of everything otherwise, including of course our atmosphere and water. And we also believe that this is most likely how Mars lost all of its atmosphere and water as well. And although generally we understand how magnetic field works on our planet, we also kind of get the idea of how it works on other planets, including Jupiter and Saturn. We don't really know um, of any other observations outside of our solar system. So for the first time ever, the scientists were able to observe and measure the magnetosphere of another planet somewhere out there. And not just one planet, four separate planets. The study that you can find in the description below took a look at four planets that you can see on the screen. These are the names of the planets here and was able to relatively accurately describe and predict the strength of the magnetosphere of these four objects. But here's a question though, what type of planets were these and why was it that it's the first time ever that we were able to discover this and also, of course, how did they actually do it? Now we actually have some of these planets here in Space Engine that are already simulated for us and here is one of them. All four of these are what's known as hot Jupiters. They're essentially um, very Jupiter-like objects, very, very large, very massive gas giants that are so close to their parent star that they're basically on fire. They're extremely hot, they have a lot of really interesting conditions on the surface that we can't even really predict because we don't have anything like this in our own solar system. And at the same time, as you can see, they're also probably losing a lot of matter. But these objects are very, very common in the galaxy. As a matter of fact, pretty much most of these stars that we've taken a look at have these unusual objects. And uh, our solar system doesn't and we don't really know why. But that's another story for another day. We've talked about this in some of the previous videos. So these hot Jupiters that they took a look at are relatively close to their parent stars. And because of this, they're sort of directly able to interact with the magnetic field of the parent star. And this is something that we can actually observe and in some sense, of course, measure, and this is how we discovered all of this. Because of the proximity of the actual planet with the star, their magnetosphere, or the magnetic fields, are sort of interconnected. They're basically almost like attached to each other, and so the effect of one will have an effect on the other. And so by measuring the changes in the magnetic field of the star, the scientists can then estimate or I guess in some sense calculate the actual strength of the magnetic field of the planet, which is kind of how they did this. They saw the changes in the magnetic field of the star and then used a very specific element to calculate the differences in changes and thus uh, estimate the magnetic field of the actual planet next to it. Now to measure these variations, they used a very simple element, calcium, specifically the ionized calcium that they could detect and whose changes they could detect using the light coming off uh, from the actual star itself. And so by measuring the variations of calcium, they were able to then estimate the strength of the magnetic field. You can learn the details in the paper in the description. So what did they actually discover? Well, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. They've discovered that for all of these four hot Jupiters that they were studying, the magnetic field was a lot stronger than we originally predicted. As a matter of fact, significantly stronger than even our own Jupiter. And let's actually do a comparison here. So let's start with Jupiter. Jupiter has the strongest magnetic field of all of the planets in the solar system. And the actual strength of the magnetic field um, along the equator is roughly around 4.2 Gauss. Now, it also has a tremendously large, um, what's known as a magnetic moment, which of course refers to the size of the magnetosphere. So because of this, um, the actual strength of the magnetic field of Jupiter compared to the magnetic field of our own planet Earth is only about 10 times. In other words, while the magnetic field of Jupiter is 4.2 Gauss, the magnetic field of Earth is about 0.4 or 0.43 Gauss. 
but the actual size of the magnetic field of Jupiter is about 18,000 times larger because of the size of the planet. As a matter of fact, here's an illustration showing you how tremendously large this magnetic field is. In comparison to Earth, it is ridiculously large. So how does this compare to what we've discovered? Well, even though the Jupiter's magnetic field is already super strong, while also being really, really large, these unusual hot Jupiters have an even stronger and larger magnetic field. As a matter of fact, from what we've seen in terms of strength, while Jupiter is only about 4.2 Gauss, these objects have magnetic field of 20 to 120 Gauss. So anywhere from only about 5 times stronger up to about 30 times stronger uh, than Jupiter. And the size as well is probably larger because hot Jupiters are probably a little bit bigger in size. So in other words, these unusual planets have such a strong magnetic field that they most likely have a tremendous influence in the vicinity um, in their star systems, creating such extreme and such hard to understand and explain environments that it will take us years to try to figure out what all of this means. The other thing that the scientists discovered that is kind of interesting is that um, they might have realized that the reason for the strength of a magnetic field is actually due to the temperature of the planet. It seems that the uh, planetary magnetic field directly depends on the planetary temperature. In other words, um, it really depends on the amount of heat traveling through uh, the planet. And so these really, really hot, um, hot Jupiter objects have so much heat inside and so much motion that uh, it's probably what's creating these really powerful fields. And so theoretically, these large objects, due to their proximity to the star, will probably have much stronger magnetic fields than any other similar planetary objects on the outskirts. And it's still something that we need to confirm. For example, maybe we need to take a look at a brown dwarf somewhere nearby to see how strong its magnetic field is. But so far, the idea here, or I guess the theory, is that the heat from the star causes this object to have such a tremendously powerful magnetosphere. It would also be very interesting to find out if this also affects other planets. Like, for example, this is a planet known as TRAPPIST-1b, one of the more exciting objects and in one of the more exciting star systems out there because there are seven terrestrial planets here. But this one is kind of hot. So would this hotter object have more magnetosphere because it's so much closer to the star? So this is something that we definitely need to investigate and something that needs to be studied in more detail. And finally, these scientists also have a very interesting idea that they would like to test in the future. They believe that because of the strength of the magnetosphere, all of these hot Jupiters, due to their parameters, would actually be emitting really powerful masers. Basically, kind of like lasers, but in microwave radiation. And uh, we should be able to see these if we were to kind of point a microwave telescope at these objects, which would then um, help us kind of see what's going on inside the atmospheres of these planets, and also help us um, see various interactions between uh, both the magnetosphere of the planet and nearby objects. So this is maybe something that they'll do in the future, but for now, this is already quite exciting. We were able to relatively accurately predict and calculate the magnetosphere of another planet. Technically, four planets. Anyway, on that note, check out the paper in the description below. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Most importantly, come back tomorrow, and I'll see you tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.